Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we have the rare opportunity to check out a Biostar graphics card. That's actually something many of you have been requesting for quite some time now. On hand is their Radeon RX 6600 XT model, which I, I think they're calling the gaming, just, just gaming version. Of course, there isn't a non-gaming version, but you know, you've got to stick the word gaming on the box. Otherwise, those filthy gamers aren't going to know it's for them. So to be clear, this is a gaming graphics card designed for gamers. And if you want to know more about how the Radeon RX 6600 XT performs, then I suggest checking out our detailed review, which was released on the channel yesterday. And we cover plenty of game benchmarks, ray tracing performance, and all that sort of stuff. Now, Biostar typically doesn't release more than a single version of each GPU. So this is likely going to be the only 6600 XT that we see from them. And that being the case, is it any good? <laughs> I guess the thumbnail and title is probably giving it away, but you know, in short, this thing is bloody awful. And of course I will show you exactly why. But before that, let's take a closer look at the card and that's gonna give a few things away. Also, as we go over the card, it is well worth keeping in mind that this thing's based on an MSRP of $380 US. And while prices are pretty crazy right now, very crazy right now, that's still a very high target price. And I have to assume this is a base model 6600 XT and not intended to be a premium Strix or Gaming X type version. And we'll give them the benefit of the doubt on that one. The card is quite small, but that's not unusual for a 6600 XT. After all, we're talking about a product with a 160 watt total board power rating. So there's really no need for triple fan, triple slot coolers. Still, although the cooling requirements are modest, Biostar might have misread AMD's design guidelines, mistaking 160 watts for 60 watts because the cooler they've thrown on this thing is it's an embarrassment but let's start with the weight in total the card weighs just 575 grams and that's incredibly light for even a graphics card of this tier and out of the countless models i have in the office spanning all kinds of different gpus i wasn't able to find anything under 600 grams for reference the power color 6600 xt hellhound that tips the scales at 753 grams of course, the weight isn't everything, and really it's the design that matters the most. And this is where the first red flags for me were raised with Biostar's graphics card. Typically speaking, graphics cards feature what is known as stamped fin heat sinks. These are typically very fine, very thin fins, which are individually manufactured and then stamped together using the zipper fin method. They're ideal for producing high efficiency, high aspect ratio, lightweight heat sinks, and are therefore the preferred method for cooling products such as graphics cards. Basically all AIB 6600 XT models we have used this method, with the only exception of course being this Biostar card. Biostar has opted to use a cheaper and far less efficient method where they machine the heat sink out of a block of aluminium, and you'll often see this method used for stuff like motherboard varium heat sinks. There's a number of drawbacks though to using this method for cooling a graphics card. Firstly, the heatsink is self-supported by the block that it's carved out of, and because of that, it isn't able to allow air to pass through it, reaching the PCB and other components beneath. To address this, Biostar has made a few incisions, but they only allow for a fraction of the air to pass through when compared to what we see with something like the Hellhound. But the biggest issue for cooling the primary components is the surface area. The milled heatsink only features around 80 vertical fins, though about a dozen of them are only a few millimetres tall and therefore aren't really adding much to the overall surface area of the cooler. I estimate that the Hellhound heatsink offers at least 170% more surface area for air to pass over, so naturally that's going to have a huge impact on cooling performance. Biostar has at least added a pair of 8mm copper heat pipes to help move heat away from the GPU die, and they're also used to form a copper base plate which helps increase thermal transfer. As for the GDDR6 memory and VRM components, those are cooled via the aluminium heatsink, though this shouldn't be an issue. Over on the PCB we find a very basic 6 plus 2 power configuration using on semi 55 amp power stages, and for reference the power colour Hellhound features the same power delivery so that shouldn't be an issue, and I suspect this is the AMD reference spec. As for the rest of the Biostar 6600 XT, it's all pretty standard including stuff like an 8 pin PCIe power input, a single HDMI output and three display ports. Sadly there is no dual BIOS, which is a really handy backup feature and something that really should be a standard feature on any graphics card priced over $250 US. 
Now, in terms of clock specifications, Biostar has chosen to adhere to the default AMD specification, and that means under typical gaming load, the GPU clocks between 2.4 and 2.5 GHz. I should note that the actual FPS performance isn't a problem with this model, at least it wasn't under our test conditions, rather the issue is thermals and operating volume. So let's take a look at that by checking out how the Biostar 6600 XT performs in our enclosed test system using the Corsair Obsidian 500D in a 21 degree room. Now the footage you're looking at here was recorded after a 30 minute warm up period, and the hotspot temperature which peaked at 92 degrees isn't terrible, and these cards won't run into any throttling issues below 110 degrees Celsius, so it is running well within spec. The calls also clocked at 2430 MHz on average, which is again within spec. In fact, it's above AMD's claimed game GPU clock frequency of 2359 MHz, so no issues there. The problem with the Biostar 6600 XT becomes apparent just seconds after loading into any game, and that problem is the fan speed. Here you can see the fans consistently spun at between 3400 and 3500 RPM. And I probably don't need to tell you that the operating volume at this fan speed is extremely loud. It was recorded to be 52 decibels, so that's about the loudest graphics card I think I've ever come across. It only takes about 30 seconds of load from an idle temperature for the fans to exceed 2000 RPM, and shortly after that they're rotating at over 3000 RPM. It is a horrible experience, and not a graphics card I could live with, no matter how good my headset was. And the crazy part being we're testing in a relatively cool 21 degree room inside a high airflow case. So therefore I decided to test again, but this time I increased the room temperature to 25 degrees, which is about as hot as I can make my office this time of year, and I disabled the top mounted exhaust fans. So now we had three 120 millimeter fans in the front for the AIO, and a single 120 millimeter fan in the rear acting as an exhaust. Under these conditions, the fan speed increased further to 3800 RPM, which I have to imagine is the limit for these fans, but it is hard to tell given that anything over 3200 RPM is reported back as 100% fan speed. Basically, if you happen to live in a warmer climate, the Biostar 6600 XT is going to sound like a vacuum cleaner. Now normally for comparing graphics cards, we include 40 decibel noise normalized temperature results for an apples to apples comparison of cooler performance. The only problem here being that I couldn't actually get the Biostar card to run at 40 decibels. The quietest I got the thing was 42 decibels, and here the hotspot temperature peaked at 104 degrees Celsius. And again, this was in a 21 degree room. The clock frequency only dropped by 20 megahertz, but the point is you can't even achieve a 40 decibel operating volume with this graphics card. That's how bad it is. But to show you just how bad it is, here's the PowerColor 6600 XT Hellhound running under the exact same conditions with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees. The hotspot temperature peaked at just 80 degrees, so 12 degrees cooler than the Biostar model, but it achieved this with a fan speed of just 1250 RPM and an operating volume of just 36 decibels, making it significantly cooler and quieter than Biostar's card. Now here's a direct look at how Biostar 6600 XT compares to PowerColor's Hellhound, and I've also thrown in the AMD 6700 XT as well, just for reference. As you can see, out of the box, the temperature results don't look too bad for the Biostar 6600 XT, and that's of course ignoring the horrendous operating volume. When noise normalized to 40 decibels, which isn't actually achievable with the Biostar model, things do look much different. Despite operating two decibels louder, the Biostar card ran an incredible 35 degrees hotter than the Hellhound, hitting an eye-watering 106 degrees. I probably don't need to tell you, but that is a terrible result that's frankly unsatisfactory, and despite the fact that it did avoid throttling, I still personally consider this to be a failure. And just finally, I noticed that the Biostar and PowerColor Hellhound graphics cards appear to use the exact same PCB layout with the same mounting points for the coolers. So I decided to strip them both down, and at that point I realized I could install the Hellhound cooler on the Biostar card. So I thought, why not? Let's, try, let's just do that and see what happens. So I applied a fresh layer of Arctic MX4 thermal paste to the GPU die area and yeah, mounted it on the Biostar card. With the hybrid Biostar slash Hellhound card up and running, I fired up Shadow of the Tomb Raider and found that in terms of thermals and operating volume, I'd basically just turned the garbage Biostar card into the Hellhound. So quite a dramatic improvement there. 
And this confirms what we already knew, the Biostar cooler is horrible and it completely undermines the performance of this product. So there you have it, the Biostar RX 6600 XT Gaming. And boy oh boy do I recommend avoiding it. Presumably this model won't really be any cheaper than other sort of entry level models such as Power Colors Hellhound. So there's absolutely no reason to purchase it over something like the Hellhound. And yeah, really, I think I'd just recommend you avoid it like the plague. In my opinion, the only reason you'd possibly entertain putting up with this model would be if it was significantly cheaper than just everything else that's available on the market. And I guess also that it would be available. Also, if cheap enough, you could justify messing around with upgrading the cooler or just live with the insane operating volume. And perhaps those of you who wear your headphones almost exclusively, you could live with this thing. But yeah, I sure as hell couldn't. Of course, the operating volume is just part of the problem. And while very annoying and very noticeable, the fact that the GPU is pushed well into the 90 degree range could be cause for concern and certainly could reduce the lifespan of this product. At the end of the day, I think it's just best to avoid the Biostar card and hold out for something a lot better, like maybe Power Colors Hellhound. But I'm sure there's um there's gonna be plenty of better options out there. This this has to be the absolute worst. It's the worst graphics card that at least functions without some sort of major defect. Um, if you don't consider that heatsink a defect. But anyway, it's it's not a good graphics card, just avoid it. Uh, I'll I think I've made that much clear at this point. Yeah, so that is going to do it for this review of the Biostar RX 6600 XT Gaming. If you did enjoy the video, found it useful, like. You can also subscribe for more content. If pricing and availability does turn out to be acceptable, whatever that looks like for the 6600 XT, then perhaps we will do some roundups. I do have a lot of AIB models, Sapphire, Power, Color, uh, Gigabyte, MSI, Asus, the, the list goes on. So XFX, pretty much got them all. So yeah, if it, if it makes sense, then yeah, we will have that content. So if you're interested, make sure you're subscribed. Uh, also, you can join us over at Patreon, a float plane that will get access to, well, the Harbour Unbox community. Become a Harbour Unbox community member. Tim and myself do live streams for you guys. Uh, we have an exclusive Discord chat. Again, Tim and myself are, are there, so you can chat with us there. Uh, behind the scenes content, Q&A. A lot of cool stuff. So if you're interested, the links are in the video description. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. And I'll see you again next time.